Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And on today's episode of The Art of Repair, oh, you know it. You read the title. You're here for a reason. You better get your notepads out, because this one's going to get dense. Reballing 101. Let's get in there. Hey, welcome to Reballing 101. You're gonna need a couple things if you actually wanna do some like proficient reballing. The first thing that you're gonna wanna have is some clean room cloth. It's this little stuff right here. You're gonna want some 99% isopropyl alcohol, which is right here. Next, we're gonna have some 6337, I'm telling you right now, 6337 solder paste. And you're gonna wanna leave it out for a few days. Trust me with the top off, trust me, right? Next thing you're gonna need is the proper set of tweezers. Now, you are guaranteed that this set of tweezers is gonna be all over the internet here in about five seconds as soon as I show this to everybody because it's legit as heck, right? But most people, they use everything from the worst kind of micro expensive tweezers possible to forks. The fork idea is pretty cool, we may talk about that. but you're gonna need the proper set of tweezers. Right here. These are 304 stainless. They're at an angle at the end. They're strong as heck, and they've got some real, real nice grooves in there to grab some stuff. If you're a fan of the iFixit serrated tweezers, the, the ones that look like this, this is the grandpappy, I tell you what. So you're gonna need the proper set of tweezers. You're gonna need a stencil, okay? This is what a stencil looks like. Now, me personally, I can use any stencil just fine, and if you know how to reball, you can too. There are lots of extra fancy, funky, weird stencils out there that do all kinds of extra things, and they're actually pretty cool. Some of them add more solder to it so the balls are a little bigger. Some of them make it where you can hold it easier. They've got different purposes, and they're cool purposes. But for the sake of this video, I wanna show you with the most simple way possible so that you know that it's possible and it's not just a game, okay? So like I said, stencil. Now, you'll see this stencil right here is actually pretty used. I, I, I don't know. I don't have a problem with stencils that are slightly warped. I will use them. This one's probably just as old as the iPhone 7. I've had it for a long time. So, you know, don't worry so much. Obviously, it can't be, you know, bent in half or anything like that, but the method that I'm gonna show you we're gonna overcome some of those things. I forgot to tell you, you need one more thing. A spudger, sorry, I forgot. I will put that in the beginning of the video as well, okay? So we've got all that stuff and you know, th this is something you can get real easy. I actually think this helps with a lot of micro soldering. It is just a wrist rest. You can get one or two of them and I usually just kinda stick them right where I'm working. They kind of steady your hands a bit. You know what I mean? So now we're prepped up, we're ready. You can see my hand here isn't moving. So it's gonna, it's gonna help you with those shaky hands. By the way, I don't know if you're noticing, I'm taking all the excuses away. I don't wanna hear it, okay? Um, but yeah, I think we've got everything we need. We've even got ourselves a medium-sized chip up here. And I don't know if I said it before, sorry. I, I just don't have the gloves right now where I'd be wearing them and you should be wearing them too, okay? Um, I do have the exhaust on back here, so make sure that you guys have some sort of solder fume exhaust so that you are not breathing this stuff. It is not fun to breathe this stuff over a long period of time and I do not recommend it. And let's get started. So the first thing that we see here is that this chip still has a lot of other junk on it. And I think this scares a lot of people. I think that when they get the chip off the board, they think, oh, maybe I messed it up, or oh, maybe this, or oh, maybe that. In my personal opinion, if you're actually just taking a chip off correctly, correctly, if you're taking it off correctly, then there really shouldn't be an issue as long as that IC chip wasn't damaged before. If the reason you were replacing it was because it was damaged, you're not gonna reball and fix it. Let's just, that's gotta be circumstantial. That's gotta be a, there's gotta be a reason that you're doing that, you know what I mean? But outside of that, if you're just putting it on there and you're just taking it off, you should be fine. So let's go ahead and get that excuse out of the way. I just like buying new chips for five or $6 a piece. And some of these chips are pretty expensive, right? And 
This video is going to help you start harvesting chips from other stuff. Man, this video is going to pay for itself. Um, okay, you don't need to be doing all that. We've, we've come to that conclusion now that you want to reball and you want to save money. Also, you just want to reball so one day you can do CPUs. Yeah, I know about you and your aspirations. We all got them. So, we got our tweezers. We got our flux. We've got our mostly dry solder paste. We've got our clean room cloth and we have our 99% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, we are also going to need a hot air station and um, a soldering iron. Okay, so you're going to need those as well. Got one right here. Got my iron right here. I'm going to be using, if you can look back here, a slightly bigger tip than what you guys are normally used to seeing. Okay, you need to be choosing the soldering iron tip that provides the most surface coverage for a joint. You don't need to be playing with micro pencils all day. That's how you waste money on micro pencils. Okay? So we've got it all. It's all super dirty. Let's get it back in frame here with these super secret tweezers. Oh my goodness, there's stuff all over. Is that a is that literally a capacitor stuck on here? Ooh. Goodness, where did this come from? Justin, where do you get these things? We've got to clean that up. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a little bit of flux because you are not soldering if you're not fluxing. I'm sorry. Like, it's just not a thing. And you can start in the middle above, come down, and drop on the table. You saw how it came off without moving the chip. Not a big deal. If you are not fluxing, you are not soldering. Remember. Remember. We're going to take our iron, and we're going to take a little bit of 6337 solder because this is the one you should be using if you are watching my other videos you would know why because I teach you why so make sure you're watching the other videos we've got ourselves a big old grip of solder on here we're gonna take our tweezers and we're actually just gonna go in here and we're gonna go over everything and we're gonna flatten it up it even took that little little doodicky look at that and took that little capacitor off. Cleaned up real nice and good. We're gonna go ahead and clean our iron a little bit before we put it away. All right, so we're done, right? Those look all the same. That was just step one. We were just cleaning it off. The reason that we were cleaning it off is so that everything would be even going forward. We're gonna be reintroducing a new type of metal, a different alloy to the actual um, like chip itself. So we don't want there to be inconsistencies by not cleaning everything up. Right now, everything should be a very low mix of lead free and 6337. Now, this is where my friend the clean room cloth and the isopropyl come in. You don't want to work with a nasty gunky situation, right? So we're going to take this, and you saw that I just doused it, right, down here, just right on the top of the Menda bottle. I'm going to put it on top of the chip. And I'm just going to rub my finger over it a little bit. You can actually see that the color is changing, right? All we're doing is cleaning it up. We're cleaning the whole area up at the same time. If you clean the whole area at the same time, you can work clean. Now, I've got the chip in my hands, and I'm slightly just kind of working between my fingers just a little bit across it. All we're trying to do is clean off all that old spent flux, okay? We don't want that. We want a nice, clean, dry surface, always. I'm going to do a quick visual inspection because I like to do that personally. You don't have to, but that's, that's part of my jams. And I'm going to put this bad boy back down in here. And what we're going to see here is a very clean, even surface to work with. How about that? We're not playing games with it. Now we've got our nasty old little old stencil here from years and years ago that I've used a million times, and I'm going to use it again right now. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take just a second to use this already isoprobal cloth to clean it off on a clean surface. That way the entire surface is even and clean. Now, I know earlier I showed you my stencil was kind of bent, but it's OK, because once we get to that point, you'll see that it's not that big of a deal. Now it's super clean. So the next step here is, I forgot to tell you, you need one more thing. A spudger, sorry. 
I forgot. I will put that in the beginning of the video as well. Um, now, the reason I like to use a plastic spudger is I just kind of feel like when you go inside and try and take out some of the solder paste, got some solder paste now, and you try and run it across your stencil, for some reason, I feel like the plastic kind of just pushes down more. I don't know. Whenever you use metal as a spudger to release the, 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 the paste across the, the array on here, it's like if there's any imperfections in the metal spudger you're using, it may skip over or it may give you an uneven you know push of solder paste into the holes. So plastic, it's a little more malleable and it presses down. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and apply the paste. We're gonna move the actual chip over just a little bit so you guys can see it better. We're gonna, we're gonna locate the proper stencil on here. Um, there we go. We're gonna line it up over the chip and we wanna make sure that every one of those little balls is in the center as much as possible. So you see now, every one of them, you should be able to see a little bit. And the key here is, if you've ever watched Indiana Jones, where he takes the thing and puts something else in its place that weighs the same, that is exactly where we are right now, okay? From this point forward, you're gonna keep some kind of pressure on it. The reason why is, as we spread across this paste right here, Actually, you can see it right here. If you lift up, you see how it moves? You don't want that. You want that even pressure. So we're gonna keep it there. We're gonna press down. You can see I'm, You can see the flex in the plastic here. And I'm just gonna paste it over. It's real easy, just nice and flat. Then we can come back and press down and you see that? It, it almost sticks back to the plastic rod if it's dry enough. Now, I haven't let go, I haven't, I haven't let go yet. I'm just gonna set this down. I'm gonna take my tweezers with the right shape and strength. These are strong tweezers. And I'm just gonna place right on the side. I can release my other hand, okay? Now, here's the deal. People get real all kinds of weird about the temperatures they reball with. The goal here is just to get to that, to get that solder paste to the right temperature so that it slowly will phase change into a solid material. If you move too fast or use too much heat too quickly, it's gonna bubble and boil, which, dun da da dun, that's why we're using drier paste to prevent that issue. Now, if it's too dry, it's hard to use. That's why there's a middle ground. You gotta find it yourself, it's hard to quantify, okay? But you'll know, you'll know. So I'm still holding on here, right? I'm gonna have my temperature set at 345 at 70, and here's the key here. We are not going to directly heat this thing, okay? We are not gonna directly heat this thing, pay attention. We're actually gonna come from the side. So you see, this is the front. I'm gonna hit the side here and we're actually just heating up the metal and we're gonna turn the entire handle in a circular motion, you can see it moving, and you will see that it will slowly phase change. You haven't let go yet, we're not letting go yet. The reason we haven't let go yet is because the, the IC chip and the, the BGA array might still be liquid. We don't want it to stick to the stencil. Still holding on. You don't need to that long, just for a second or two. You're gonna let go. Hooey! Go put on the wrist brace, right? It's not that serious, okay? So you just really wanna give it just a second. Now you see here, I'm gonna put a little bit of new flux. The deal is we are not sure that there's something not stuck. And we wanna be careful because these IC chips, they really are fragile and we do wanna be careful with them. So I put that on there and I'm changing my hot air station over to 140 degrees centigrade. The reason that I'm doing that is because that is well below 
solder's melting point, especially this solder, this is 6337, so like 183, right? Directly on the line, right? So if I'm using a temperature that's way lower, then it's not gonna melt anything, but it might loosen it up and lubricate it if you add a little flux. So we're gonna hit it just a little bit here. You saw that it just literally is melting and going down into the holes, right? Then you can flip it over. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to take our tweezers and this is just a gentle thing. You know, I try to tell people that, let me just explain this. When, when you're touching ICs and you're touching components and you're touching things anywhere that are integrated like crazy amounts of you know, stuff going on and they're fragile, treat it like you just got a job flipping pages on a 600 year old book. That is your job now. You need to be that gentle. So as I'm making my way through uh, the book, just uh, gently use the book weight uh, to hold the page open. Um, never read uh, or scan the lines with your finger. Uh, you can ask for um, an acid-free bookmark. Oh, what the hell? Whoa, whoa, where am I? Okay, so let's get back our heat. 140, doesn't matter the airflow. You're just trying to heat it up a little bit. Maybe we'll even drop it down. I don't know, whatever. 140. All we want is that everything is warmed up just a little bit so it loosens up. Did you see what just happened there? Now we're gonna flip it over very gently. You're just turning the pages of your old book. It's your job now, okay? And we're gonna take this thing off and like slide it off really gently. We don't wanna try and pick it up, okay? Like you don't wanna touch things you shouldn't be touching all the time. Always find ways to do things without, you know, that, that extra. You can just pull the stencil and slide it off very gently. right in the back of the middle of the frame there. Okay, we're not done yet. You thought we were done. You were like, yeah, all right, I'm about to go do that right now. I'm sorry, not yet. We've still got some things to do. Um, the next thing that we actually wanna do is we wanna make sure that the array itself is completely aligned. And I know what you're thinking. Well, you know, Justin, that little stencil thing looked like it was good to go. Why isn't this one? Well, let me show you. So we're gonna go back, we're going to take our nice, nice tweezers here, and we're gonna hold it, and we're gonna go back to melting point temperature. I'm actually just gonna do my normal uh, 345 at 70 on my quick 861DW, and once I do that, it's gonna melt the solder. And if you've watched some of my other videos about surface tension, ooh, you're in for a treat. Check this out. We're gonna barely hold on to it. It's a Bible page, whatever kind of page you want. Something, 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 careful. We're gonna come in here. Actually, yeah, can you see that? Yeah, I just wanna make sure y'all can see it. Did you guys see that? That was so cool. So the deal is, every one of those little balls self write it. And if you want to know how that happened, you need to go look at my video on surface tension. It's crazy. Um, so now it looks like we have ourselves a finished product, right? We're done? We can use it? Nah -uh -uh. We're going back to cleaning again, okay? There's two things that we need to clean right now. Number one, we need to clean our stencil. Um, the key to keeping your stencil for a long time is maintenance. So. You know, I'm not a real big ultrasonic fan anymore. Um, if you've got an ultrasonic, it's great to throw these in at the end of the day for about 15, 20 minutes. It really helps. Um, it'll eat away the coatings, but uh, you can do that or you can just wipe them down like I'm doing. I mean, I'm just, I'm just making sure that they're super clean in there. <laughs> because what if I got to do this on the next job? I want it to be ready. So this is good to go, it's clean. Now we've got the chip, we gotta clean that. We've still got that same single one, we don't need an extra one. There's plenty of clean room cloth here for that. And we're gonna do the exact same maneuver that I taught you before. We're just gonna clean the area.
And we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna clean it in our hands a little bit. And all I'm doing is just, you know, world's, world's tiniest violin. You know what I mean? Just real gentle. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to present to you, for your viewing pleasure, a beautiful reball, just fresh out the, the stencil, nice and clean. You can see in the middle that there's still a little bit of the isoprobal. Um, if you want to clean it more, you can, but I would say it needs to be perfectly clean before you actually apply it back to the board. But I hope you see that this is terribly simple. And, you know, I'm not saying that I'm this proficient, but I have witnessed people in China doing full dual layer CPU reballs in less than three minutes. So all I'm saying is it's possible. I've seen it. I wouldn't have believed it myself, but it's true. So practice those skills and let me know below how it goes for you. Whew. Man, that was a lot of talking. It's a lot of talking. Whew. But boy, was that fun. I tell you what, I love, I, I love stretching out the process like that and talking about it because it really just drives it home for me too. You know, like they, I heard a long time ago that, you know, when you teach, you learn and if you teach a lot, you, you, you really have to kind of know what you're talking about, you know what I mean? So for me, it just keeps, keeps driving home these fundamentals, and it just, it's fun for me. So I really hope you guys had a lot of fun today, and you know, I hope you're going to go home or get, get back to the shop and go practice this. I'd really actually love to see your attempts, and not only that, but like if you guys could leave some comments down below, if you're within the first 24 hours, I'm gonna to reply to that in a reply video. Like, I'm gonna answer your question. You know, if you got a question about reball and it's gonna be me answering that to you, okay? So, go ahead, do that for me, and you know, I'll be honest, I'm at that part where the rest of the video is just kinda of like, oh man, he's about to hit us with it. So, if you wanna click out now, guys, here you go. If not, boom, I'm gonna need y'all to, uh, I need y'all to like, share, subscribe, Notify, you know what? I'll, give it, I'll make it worth your time. I'll make it worth your time. Let me show you this beautiful reball. Let me show you. If you could like and subscribe and notify, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Look at that beautiful reball. Ooh, that's nice. You can see my, my cool 24 karat gold tweezers that I accidentally bought for $40. Crazy. I guess on that note, you know, I guess we've, we've done everything we're supposed to do today, right? Well, I guess if, we're, if we are talking about tweezers, I do have this guy who wants to talk to you guys for a second. So let me get him. I, I heard he was the, the channel sponsor. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? My name's Justin with The Art of Repair, and boy, let me tell you something about tweezers. Let me, I, let's get this reball out the way. Y'all seen it. Y'all know what the deal is. Let's jump on over here. Did you guys know that if you head on over to shop.artof.repair right now, you can pick up this amazing set of tweezers right here. But I, I tell you what, this is one mighty fine stainless steel tweezer. It is, it is the one you want to be using on reballs. I'll tell you that. Um, but anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. If, uh, if you do need any sort of amazing micro soldering tweezers, in fact, the best micro soldering tweezers, head on down. I've tried, I've tested every single one. Shop.artof.repair. By the way, I love you guys. You guys are the best.